This is the University of Rochester. Hello, and welcome again to the Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Address. I am very honored to introduce today's speaker, a man of great stature, Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry. Reverend Dr. Lowry is a civil rights activist that has dedicated his time, effort, and voice to speaking out against injustices and promoting equality among all. His vast achievements have allowed him to cross paths with prominent influential figures such as Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela, and Barack Obama. Reverend Lowry began his impressive advocacy career with his involvement in the civil rights movement during the early 1950s in Mobile, Alabama, where he fought for the integration of public transportation, public places, and equality in the workforce. He also became a co-founder with Martin Luther King Jr. of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957. Reverend Dr. Lowry served on the board of directors of MARTA, the Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority for 23 years, and was instrumental in securing millions in contracts from minority businesses. He has accomplished numerous missions that have promoted peace, unity, and inclusiveness for all. Dr. Reverend Joseph Lowry has been named one of the nation's 15 greatest black preachers by Ebony Magazine. In 1997, he was honored in the, with the NAACP's Lifetime Achievement Award, the Martin Luther King Center Peace Award, and has received honorary degrees from numerous colleges and universities across the nation. In August 2009, President Obama presented Reverend Lowry with the nation's highest civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom. His vast accomplishments and lifelong dedication to standing up to injustices and promoting equality is truly inspirational, and words cannot express the profound impact he has had on our society. Now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry. before I take up an offering. <laughs> Let's see how that works. That's kind of low. That's too low. Don't we have a high chair? This is high as we got? Yes, yeah, as high as we can. Too, too, too low. low. To the side, if you'd like. Too low. Too low. Well, uh, let's see. Okay. I'll work it out. Like if I get tired, I'll sit down. We can move you over to the and, uh, No, it's not in. See where we where we end up. I'm delighted to to be here at the University of Rochester and in this sunny community. <laughs> yeah, you don't know how pleased I am to, to have seen the sun. I was just sure that when I got to Rochester that the weather report would be false and it would not be sunny, it would be snowy. But thank you for arranging the sun. It's too dark out there. Who's, who's handling the lights? What, let, me, let me see who's going to throw the eggs and tomato. Can you turn it up a little bit? Well, I guess they can't. All right. Uh, I'm especially pleased to learn about the richness of the history, the historicity of this community and this university. You throw around names like Susan, Susan Anthony and Frederick Douglass, like other communities, throw around Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> so you have a rich history and uh, a reputation that 
harmonizes with that history, and I want to thank you for all of that. The uh, president gave me a note written by Frederick Douglass, and I, he doesn't know how much I appreciate that. Frederick Douglass is a great figure in American history. We're here to celebrate the 81st birthday and the 25th year that we have honored Dr. King with a national holiday. Let me take a minute or two to talk about the holiday as an event that honors a man whose dream from the mountaintop revealed a vision that was designed to shape our future. The enactment of the legislation in 1983, signed by Ronald Reagan, who said he wasn't going to sign it, but he did. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the reason he signed it was not because he had a change of heart, but because it passed with such a margin that it was veto proof. And he signed it. That legislation signified in a very historic and special way, the nation's commitment to racial justice. And I think we need to keep that in mind as we observe the holiday. The only American, incidentally, who, whose birthday is honored in such fashion that in every state, now that Arizona and New Hampshire have come on board. It indeed does honor the man, scholar, visionary, prophet, crusader, preacher, pastor, whose vision empowered him to wrestle with analyses without paralysis. It empowered him to engage in intellectual combat in both logical and theological dialectics. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds good um, <laughs> in the midst of academia. <laughs> but Martin's understanding of the historical enabled him to illumine the past, clarify the present, and envision the future. He was a man whose deep devotion to the pursuit of justice led him into the fiery furnace of political combustion and fiscal frenetics. But like the militants of the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, some people pronounce that last fella a bad Negro. <laughs> he found strength, Martin did, in partnership with God and while he couldn't always avoid the fiery furnace, he found God in the midst of the fire. He gave hope to the hopeless, power to the powerless. He had a fire in his belly that fire hoses couldn't wash out, billy clubs couldn't beat out, bombs couldn't blast out, bullets couldn't shoot out, Jails couldn't lock out, and money couldn't buy out. And while the dream is eloquent and eternal, we have let certain forces hijack the dream and sanitize the dreamer to the extent that we have somewhat dimmed the pain and the suffering that characterize the struggle. We've even permitted them to utilize the dream to undermine the true meaning of affirmative action. 